Hello, uh, my name is Hassan Kakaya. I have worked for many years uh, as head of the Competition and Consumer Policy Programs at UNCTAD. Uh, UNCTAD is an organization that uh, tries to respond to the needs of developing countries and institutions. Uh, most of them are newly uh, uh, emerging and setting up their own institutions. Uh, during these years, this is the case actually of working with UNCTAD, I came across uh, a number and interacted with a large number of international organizations but also work on competition law and policy. And many of the young agencies are somehow puzzled or unclear as to what roles and what activities and how they can make use of these institutions. So uh, the purpose of this uh, ICN uh, uh, training on demand module is to introduce the various work of all these uh, organizations and to see how they fit uh, together. So let's begin out to uh, all of these institutions. International organization fits into several categories. Uh, some operates on on global basis, uh, including the international uh, competition networks, um, the UNCTAD uh, uh, branch on work on competition consumer policy, including the intergovernmental group of experts, the OECD uh, uh, CLP, that is Committee on Law and Competition Policy, uh, the World Bank, uh, uh, various programs. Uh, as well as other regional institutions as, as the African Competition Forum, the APEC uh, work on competition policies, the, and the Latin American Forum, for example, just to name a few. Let's begin with the ICN. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Andrea Mont, who is the president of uh, Germany's Bundeskartalamt and head of the ICN uh, steering uh, uh, group. So well, perhaps what we could do is, is begin this discussion with um, introducing first the ICN. Uh, and before doing that, is introducing Mr. Uh, Andrea Mont, who is the head of the Bundeskartal Amt, uh, the Cartel Office of Germany. You have the floor, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Hassan. Well, um, to tell you a few things about the ICN, uh, which today is a very mature and, and, and stable organization, um, I think what you should know first is that the ICN is truly a global organization. Uh, it is inclusive, so we really hope to include all agencies from all parts of the world. It is informal and uh, it is, of course, voluntary, which means that you can contribute but you don't have to. You can listen, but if, we, if you provide input, that is even more valuable for our day-to-day -day work and for your day-to-day -day work as an agency. It is true that the ICN is still a young agency. It was founded back in 2001. We started off with uh, 16 competition agencies that have founded the ICN. Uh, today it represents the vast majority of existing competition agencies, that is 130 around the world. Uh, all members of the ICN are encouraged to get involved in the work process of the ICN. And I think this broad membership, this diverse membership, um, the different legal traditions, the different size of competition agencies, the geographical aspects of competition agencies involved, different cultures, different languages, they pose challenges. But at the same time, they are the greatest asset also of the ICN because they make sure that really every aspect of competition regimes around the world are included in the ICN. So how do we bridge the differences that we have, of course, if you have 130 members from around the world? Well, first, the ICN literally brings together all competition agencies and not only competition agencies, also non-governmental advisors from around uh, the world. So what we have to do in first place is that we build trust among each other in order to communicate, in order to cooperate, and that we share experience among each other. That is very important. The second approach is we have a very pragmatic way to work and to take care of our work products. The ICN literally invites everyone to give input. By the way, not only competition agencies, also non-governmental advisors, they sit together around the table and discuss papers, 
and discuss the output of the ICN, but always driven, of course, by agencies. That is an important feature. We have a new, unique setting at the ICN, which you can experience at conferences, the annual conference that we hold once a year, that you can experience in teleseminars, that you can experience in town hall meetings, in teleconferences, in workshops around the world. I think that is also something unique that no other international organization provides around the world. And this, these features have helped us to create standards. What, um, what the ICN has produced over time, I think we can really say it is the only and the biggest encyclopedia of competition law around uh, the world, and it has an impact this encyclopedia, um, we have created an impressive and, and steadily growing body of practical recommendations, recommended practices, other tools. We have high quality written work products. It is really a comprehensive encyclopedia. And all ICN members, and not only the members, have access uh, to this encyclopedia, which also means that we can broaden the impact of this encyclopedia by keeping it open. We are not a closed shop. We are open to everyone. And the products matter. Uh, we have seen in our survey that we have done recently about the impact of the ICN, we have seen that almost 80% of the responding agencies have stated that they have used ICN guidance to change internal agency application of the law, and more than half of the respondents have stated that they have changed their rules and their legislation. So you can see that the ICN um, is a robust, broad, very lively, inclusive organization, um, and it is really worth uh, to join it, to be in it, and to work with its work products. I think um, it would take a complete module um, to describe and to, to scope out the ICN's work product, uh, and I think that can be much better done by Paul O'Brien from the OUS FTC, uh, who uh, quickly introduced the high points. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andreas. Welcome. Thank you. The International Competition Network offers a treasure trove of work product covering the full range of competition law and policy topics. ICN's work is grouped into five primary topic areas, mergers, cartels, unilateral conduct, advocacy, and agency effectiveness. Think of ICN work product in terms of four basic types with different purposes. The first and foremost, ICN's most prominent work product category is recommended practices and other guidance. These are consensus aspirational recommendations for all members to consider. Examples include the ICN recommended practices on merger notification, on merger analysis, on dominance, on competition assessment, and on several other topics. The second category of ICN work includes practical case handler focused jurisdiction neutral manuals on day-to-day -day enforcement topics. Examples include the ICN's anti-cartel enforcement manual with chapters on topics such as leniency, searches and digital evidence. The Merger Investigative Techniques Handbook with chapters on topics such as reliable evidence and the use of economics. The Unilateral Conduct Workbook with chapters on topics such as the assessments of dominance and exclusive dealing. The Market Studies Good Practices Handbook. And finally, the Agency Practice Manual with chapters on topics such as strategic planning and agency evaluation. The third category of ICN work product, perhaps the largest volume of ICN's work, includes informative reports that compile, highlight, and compare enforcement practices and policy perspectives from around the world. These reports often cite examples from specific jurisdictions and include work on topics such as merger guidelines, various types of single firm conduct, and cartel settlements. The fourth category of work out of the ICN involves a diverse collection of training style work in various formats and events, including regular ICN teleseminars and workshops on specific enforcement areas and notably, the ICN Training On Demand online videos that you're watching right now. We encourage you to explore ICN's vast and growing library of videos. Now, I'd like to leave you with a f few final thoughts on ICN work product. First, 
I say a work product is aspirational. Agencies decide for themselves whether and how to implement best practices they learn from colleagues around the world. Second, ICN work is created for competition agencies by competition agencies. Competition agencies are involved in the conception, discussion, drafting, and approval of all ICN work, addressing the needs of agencies from agency experience. ICN work product is accessible. All of it's online at the ICN work website. As I hope even this brief introduction demonstrates, ICN work product is a tremendous resource covering all aspects of competition law and policy. If you're looking for one place where to find ICN work product, seek out the ICN work product catalog on the front page of ICN's website. Finally, while ICN's existing work product is a valuable resource, you can help create ICN's work of tomorrow. Please contact working group chairs to get more involved in developing ICN's next work product. Thank you for your attention. We encourage you to spread the word about ICN work throughout your agency and be inspired by ICN work product. I think it's also important to note that the ICN members are most of the world competition agencies. By contrast, for example, the OECD or the UNCTAD uh, Intergovernmental Group are member states uh, themselves. Of course, both the uh, agencies and member states also participate in the work of the OECD and uh, IGE, but the distinguishing feature is that the ICN is exclusively made up of uh, autonomous and independent competition agencies. However, in practice, uh, member states are actually uh, uh, unusually represented by the competition agency, both at the OECD and the UNCTAD uh, uh, Intergovernmental Group of Experts. Historically, uh, the OECD has been uh, more geared toward uh, the developed countries and more advanced agencies, whereas the UNCTAD uh, uh, work has been geared toward the uh, developing countries. However, the lines are, uh, uh, are not always clear, and I think most of the, uh, the work over the last 10 years between, let's say, the UNCTAD, ICN, and OECD has been converging, in, in, and there have been opening and revolving doors. So let's turn next to the OECD. The OECD is intergovernmental in nature, now with 35 member countries. It has a permanent secretariat and robust institutional structure, that is built upon the substantive contributions of our member states and its wide-ranging economic and social objectives. Our mission at the OECD is to identify and develop better policies for better lives, and we do so by identifying best practices from across the OECD membership and then disseminating those findings broadly for better government. As regards specifically competition, the Competition Committee is the engine of our work, driving competition policy forward, something it has been doing very successfully for more than five decades. It is composed of the OECD Permanent Secretariat, national delegations, invited experts, as well as regular participants from non-member economies and ad hoc invitees. The role of the OECD Secretariat is to develop in-depth policy research papers, counting on a secretariat of administrators, researchers, and an ensemble of external consultants. That is why the OECD is such a nice complement to the ICN. More recently, the OECD has also been building its outreach and implementation initiatives. We are increasingly looking beyond our membership, regionally and globally, with growing success and reach, assisting non-members to move towards a well-functioning market-based economy. Since 2001, we offer the Global Forum on Competition, where we engage competition authorities all over the world, close to 90 competition agencies at the last count, on policy issues ranging from competition policy, the design of competition agencies, to the broader benefits of competition, such as economic growth and development, or how can competition contribute to poverty reduction and to foster employment. We have also the LACCF, 
a forum that engages Latin America and the Caribbean competition authorities. We have very strong regional capacity building activities as well via two unique centers of competition that cater for Asian competition agencies and judges based out of our regional center in Korea and for Eastern Europe based in our regional center in Hungary. To give you just an example and some idea of the numbers, um, in Asia, for example, uh, the competition program of the OECD KPC has held a total of 74 workshops uh, with more than 1,700 uh, participants from 30 jurisdictions and nearly 400 speakers from 25 uh, jurisdictions. Our outreach program can also help countries in building a competition culture, establishing transparent regulatory frameworks and adopting laws and policies that will foster growth. Indeed, much of our outreach efforts are also built around two main projects or areas. The first one is helping competition agencies assist governments design and implement better laws and regulations that are not unduly restricting uh, competition or creating barriers to, to, to entry. And we do so using our competition assessment toolkit. So we try to help create a healthy regulatory uh, environment, a pro-competitive uh, uh, regulatory framework. The second is to help procurement agencies design better public procurement processes that can reduce the possibilities of bid rigging in public procurement and also to help detect warning signals uh, that public procurement officials can then, uh, can then signal to competition of, of, uh, agencies so that they can further investigate and eventually open antitrust cases. Finally, we do two more important functions that I think are worth mentioning. By undertaking comprehensive peer reviews of both members and non-member uh, countries, um, and also, finally, uh, by uh, helping countries in their process of developing competition guidelines and competition rules. Uh, my own history, uh, as I noted earlier, I was at UNCTAD. My successor at the head of the competition uh, uh, consumer policy branch is uh, Mrs. Teresa Moreira. I'm Teresa Moreira, the head of the competition and consumer policies branch of UNCTAD, the UN Conference for Trade and Development. We have been doing our work mostly in the competition field uh, through uh, um, servicing uh, annual intergovernmental group of experts meetings, so uh, doing what we call consensus building, and that is based on the research and analysis that we also do in all areas related to this field. And finally, uh, using the research and analysis to uh, do technical assistance programs and capacity building projects. We have been doing this for over 15 years and I would underline as the most uh, successful uh, cases our uh, program to reinforce capacities in both the competition and the consumer policy area in, of Latin America. We are now in the third uh, edition of this COMPAL program. We also have a very uh, interesting regional program uh, addressed at the Middle East and North African countries, so the MENA countries ongoing since 2015 and that uh, involves eight or targets eight countries uh, also for both competition and consumer policy uh, areas and other regional partnerships uh, could be illustrated by the SOFIA competition forum that is uh, organized uh, twice, annual, twice annually with the uh, uh, Bulgaria competition authority and that uh, gathers representatives from the Balkan countries. We also uh, do work with uh, African countries, 
uh, not only through regional uh, economic uh, organizations such as uh, YMU or SADC or CAMESA, but with individual countries, and I would underline uh, the work that we have recently done with Zimbabwe and with Ethiopia, again in both the competition and the consumer policy fields. The World Bank has long been an active supporter of competition law and policy as part of economic reform and development strategies, but it, its main role as uh, a lender uh, uh, and not as an organization of competition agencies uh, Marta uh, Licente is the head of the competition group at the World Bank. The World Bank group supports government in three areas. First of all, in understanding what stifles effective competition dynamics in a specific markets and how laws and policies shape incentives for firms to compete and invest. Secondly, in designing and implementing more effective competition policies. And last but not least, in assessing the expected effects of competition policy interventions. Based on the World Bank Group's Markets and Competition Policy Assessment Tool, we offer our clients a tailored combination of models as analytical foundations for implementation. Implementation is key at the World Bank Group. Those models include a model on analysis of market and competition dynamics, a model on market regulation and sectoral policies, an antitrust rules and enforcement model, and finally, a model focused on state aid, state-owned enterprises, and competitive neutrality. With the help of all these standardized tools, each of the products can range from a rapid assessment, very specific, to a full-flown flagship report, and typically includes implementation support and advisory services. The common focus of all products is on identifying priority opportunities for improvements based on both feasibility and impact of reforms and enhancing the effectiveness of existing and new competition policies. To implement the offering, we typically combine both lending and non-lending instruments. We at the World Bank Group see capacity building not as an isolated, standalone instrument, but as one of the tools to achieve effective implementation and ultimately to ensure that the desired change takes effect in a specific market. Based on the models mentioned before, the World Bank Group offers implementation support, technical advice, and capacity building. This includes, first of all, the strengthening of competition framework and its implementation through the design of anti-cartel programs, merger control, monopolization and abuse, market and competition analysis techniques, institutional effectiveness of competition authorities, and advocacy units. It really much depends on what's needed and demanded by the clients. Secondly, it comprises the design of pro-competition market regulation that open a specific markets to competition and reduce government interventions that may shelter less efficient firms, protect incumbents, or facilitate collusion and cartels. Here, we also support sector-specific regulatory design. Finally, we help embedding competition principles in broader public policies and in fostering competitive neutrality. This includes implementing competition advocacy strategies, competitive neutrality and private initiatives in sectors with state-owned enterprise participation, and we also encourage the engagement of civil society and the infusion of competition principles in broader public policies, with the aim to actually elevate competition policy to the economic policy agenda. We at the World Bank Group believe that young agencies do not only build capacities by listening to experts or more experienced practitioners. They also do through access to novel data and knowledge, participation in innovative research, exchange among peers, or hearing of successful experience with competition advocacy. Therefore, we offer a realm of tools and researchers for young agencies to strengthen their implementation capacities. First, we have learned that peer-to-peer -peer events are a great resource for young agencies. We regularly organize events for agencies to exchange practical examples of challenges and cases of success in implementation of competition policy in key sectors. 
Secondly, we implement global engagement and sought leadership initiatives for young agencies. For example, this year and for the fourth year in a row, we host a pre-ICM forum jointly with partner organizations to highlight the issues particularly relevant for competition policy in developing countries. Moreover, each year, jointly with the International Competition Network, we host the Advocacy Competition Contest to honor and share successful examples of promoting competition through non-enforcement tools in key markets. Again, a great opportunity for competition agencies to learn. And finally, we we'll regularly host global conferences at the World Bank headquarters on topics such as competition advocacy and competition and shared prosperity. Thirdly, we produce knowledge products that can be a resource and learning opportunity at the same time for younger agencies. We regularly produce and update international databases. We also produce regional reports that help identify competition trends beyond the national border. For instance, jointly with the African Competition Forum, we have produced the first Africa-wide competition report, and now we're producing a flagship report on other regions. This work includes applying our tools to key sectors, for example, telecom, fertilizers, and transport. We complement such regional reports with global innovative research, for example, on the effects of competition on poverty. Last, we organize tailor-made workshops for each authority that address a particular competition issue. This is important. They are very much tailor-made. These transmit the functional, technical, and behavioral capacities to effectively address questions such as how to tackle cartels, how to assess in practice competitive neutrality, how to identify and modify some national regulatory restrictions, and how to conduct economic analysis in a particular market. Capacity building at the World Bank Group is tailored to a specific problem and purpose, and designed on the basic of a diagnostic assessment of the specific competition issues at hand. This means that it goes beyond the enforcement capacities of each specific competition authority and includes advocacy strategies as well as training for other important stakeholders, including the media, the academia, public sector bodies such as regulators, central banks, treasury, and even the Ministry of Finance. Furthermore, our capacity building strategy follows an integrated approach. In other words, capacity building activities are part of a multi-stage approach, which includes diagnostics, reform design, and implementation support. The capacity building activities we offer are either of global interest and applicability or tailor-made for individual clients. For example, to help them understand real problems such as how to organize down rates in a particular country. Finally, our capacity building services build on partnerships through regional networks, which includes the Regional Center for Competition for Latin America, the Africa Competition Forum, as well as global networks such as International Competition Network and our partners such as the OECD and bilateral partnership with agencies. In sum, capacity building at the World Bank Group is not about one specific off-the-shelf workshop or class, but rather a combination of instruments to confer the necessary analytical and more importantly implementation tools to tackle the most important competition issues in key markets consider political economy and real changes on the ground. In some cases, the regional development banks also plan and, uh, play an important role, such as the Inter uh, American Development Bank and the Asian Development Bank. Now, turning to the regional uh, competition organization, there are a lot of variations and approaches. Uh, one of the most innovative has been the African uh, Competition Forum, whose steering group is currently headed by Mr. Tembi Bon Bonkaleli, uh, who is the commissioner of the South African Competition Commission. Uh, one of the major regional uh, forum handling uh, competition issue, uh, competition policies in the African continent is the African Competition Forum. And I have the pleasure to have with me uh, Mr. Tembi Bulakili, who is the uh, Commissioner for the South African Competition, but he's also the President of the African Competition Forum, 
and who will tell us how the African Competition Forum works. You have the floor, sir. Thank you. The African Competition Forum was established as a result of the huge growth that we have seen in competition policy and proliferation of competition agencies within the African continent. So the first thing really was about how to develop capacity and share experiences with uh, uh, and amongst these agencies, most of uh, whom were, were fairly new, in an environment where even the skills required by these agencies often didn't, didn't exist in the countries. Uh, so there was a need for us to get together. Uh, there were a few older agencies, more established, established agencies, uh, and we got together and we started these capacity programs, uh, sometimes partnering with, uh, with international organizations uh, that really came in handy. Uh, we also had a funder initially who was supporting us uh, with this. And we really started to see uh, the operations of these agencies. And once that started, we then expanded cooperation to the area of research, which has been one of our most uh, successful uh, areas of operation so far. So we worked uh, on uh, certain markets and products uh, where there was general concern across uh, various countries. So we did the first uh, study there looking at uh, commodities such as sugar, uh, cement, and so on. Uh, and, and we've got a report that's been published and is quite uh, interesting for, for researchers, but also for authorities to understand the impact of lack of competition in, in some of these markets. We, we then followed that up with uh, a study we did with the, with the World Bank, looking at the state of competition in the African continent. It's the most up-to-date study on what's happening in each country. Uh, and also does a, a, a sort of a case study of uh, uh, some of the key markets such as telecommunications and so on. Uh, so research uh, is still continuing uh, as well as capacity building. We have decided that case cooperation would occur more at a sub-regional market because the continent is very big. So cases are better handled, for an example, at Comesa level or SADC level. So you see a lot of case cooperation at, uh, at uh, those levels. Can you please tell us um, about the cooperation between the ACF and the ICN, for example? What kind of cooperation exists and how useful the, the work and the product of ICN have been to the ICF and member states? Well, first of all, the, the very idea of ACF is inspired and modeled uh, uh, around the, the, the ICN. So it's a virtual organization it's a voluntary organization of agencies, although we allow also government departments in countries that are still working on policy just so that they can also feel uh, that they are part of the team. But it's really an agency-driven organization, uh, and it encourages the use of ICN uh, programs. Uh, we have the ICN uh, uh, people coming to talk about those programs ourselves as the chairs all the time. We, we, we encourage uh, our members to also join and participate in, in, in the ICN. Uh, and recently we've had a highly successful measures workshop, joint workshop with the ICN, uh, hosted by one of our members in, in, in Botswana, which attracted a lot of uh, regional agencies. Uh, and, and so uh, we have a very close cooperation we, with the ICN and we use their products quite extensively. Another important group is the Asia Pacific uh, Economic Cooperation or APEC which has a competition policy and law group that meets annually and which also organizes special events from time to time. The Regional Competition Center for Latin America was also a homegrown initiative designed to meet the needs of Latin American countries. In addition to the regional organization, uh, I should point out that there are also regional enforcement bodies such as COMESA, uh, the uh, European Commission, and uh, uh, the CARICOM, whose activities uh, may overlap uh, with the international organization to some extent. 
um, in terms of at least capacity building and support to young agencies. So having introduced the key players, how did they interact with each other and how would one know who is to turn to and for what? Let us now turn to uh, address how these organizations work effectively to build capacity in younger age addictions and where there uh, may be room for, uh, to learn from one another and create synergy. In my opinion, workshops are one of the most important and sometimes overused activities in capacity buildings. How does the ICN, the OECD and ACTA design workshops uh, or webinars to address, for example, learning a complex, uh, complex technical skills, for example, defining relevant market, let's say, in, in the IT market, um, developing a, a new way of thinking, for example, to promote confidence in market as a tool for economic development, uh, or fix a system, a systematic problems, for example, address bid rigging uh, or price control by government. I agree that capacity building workshops are very important indeed and can really help new agencies, new officials, judges, uh, procurement uh, officials and government officers and others uh, to kickstart their competition law and policy know-how. And from my own personal experience as, at the Portuguese Competition uh, Authority, I know how valuable these workshops can really be in helping agencies develop first their basic skills and then to develop these even further. At the OECD, we take the utmost care in selecting the topics that agencies uh, need. And we try to ensure that we bring the right expertise from officials uh, of our member countries to bear upon those agencies that need it. So we select, as I said, the topics very carefully, but we also select for each event participants that we know that would benefit from participating in our workshop. Uh, criteria that we use to maximize the benefits of our workshops is to target uh, those considering uh, the uh, functions, the roles, the know-how, the previous experience of those in the group. For example, in our workshop for judges, only judges may attend, naturally, as these allow for a frank uh, discussion and for sharing of uh, experience, uh, experiences amongst uh, peers who have a very fundamental and ultimate responsibility uh, in the decision of, uh, of cases. In your view, who actually need to attend these uh, workshops? Are there, objective, uh, are there objective criteria to ensure maximum impact and benefit for the participants? Capacity building is really at the core of the work that we do in ACTAD. But of course, every project and every program that we um, put in place needs to uh, correspond to the requests and to be adjusted to the needs and concerns of member states authorities or member states governments. This means to say that it is difficult to uh, have uh, like a recipe that can be um, applied uh, in every uh, country. It depends very much on the stage of the development of the competition law or of the consumer protection law and policy. And it also uh, depends very much on the stakeholders uh, that we are trying to address. For instance, for young agencies, we will have uh, concerns in, in explaining and um, assuring that they are familiar with economic concepts in what concerns competition law, for instance. Uh, uh, if we are dealing with uh, uh, other stakeholders, such as the judiciary, or uh, academia, or uh, other representatives of public bodies and the government, we may have to um, be concerned with more basic uh, um, concepts in both areas in order to raise awareness and in order to make sure that they realize the benefits of competition for economic um, growth and development, and also that they realize the importance of consumer protection to promote sustainable development uh, goals. Now, turning to uh, capacity build specifically and its effectiveness, 
uh, one must first understand what capacity already exists. How do you assess capacity level of young agencies and do you involve the young agencies in, in assessing their capacities and defining quote unquote competencies areas before these uh, workshop and uh, designs? Our ongoing and frequent outreach efforts allow us to have close and permanent contact with all of the jurisdictions that we serve. This is absolutely key and gives us a body of knowledge of many agencies and many competition jurisdictions. In the context of the two regional centers in Korea and Hungary, for instance, uh, their seven or eight workshops per year in each of the centers allows us to keep a close and permanent communication with competition agencies and officials from across those regions. The case discussions that we have during our workshops also allows us to build uh, our knowledge of the types of cases that are being brought about. At the end of each uh, workshop, we also conduct a survey on the topics that participants' agencies would like to have in the future with the reasons why they would like to discuss those topics. And we look and analyze uh, these surveys very, very carefully. Then, of course, we conduct our own uh, research. A guidebook on competition policy and laws in Asia will come out later this year, which has really allowed us to dig deep into every jurisdiction in Asia and not only understand the laws, but also the practice uh, all across the enforcement board. Finally, we engage with ads of agencies regularly to understand what their needs are in terms of capacity building, both within the context of the centers, but also in the global forum and in the Latin American and uh, Caribbean competition forum. Young agencies, uh, namely from developing countries and economies in transition, are of course uh, one of our major concerns um, because usually under our technical cooperation we assist governments in drafting the legislation and in choosing the institutional framework to put in place the, a certain policy and obviously uh, it is very important to make sure that there is uh, an institution with the capacity to uh, enforce effectively com competition law or, uh, and or uh, consumer protection law. So young agencies have specific needs. We have uh, organized discussions uh, about topics that are relevant for those who are just starting in previous uh, group of experts meetings, um, namely uh, covering issues such as the independence, uh, the information flows and the information knowledge, uh, the communication strategies, so how to interact with other stakeholders, with other governmental bodies, uh, how to raise awareness to the benefits of competition law and policy, for the um, welfare of a certain country. And um, there may be specific needs regarding the content of the competition law uh, in place. For instance, uh, the young agencies may need a specific training uh, in economics or uh, in the use of uh, econometry, or they may need to get familiar with legal techniques and the use of in investigative tools such as uh, dawn raids, such as interviews to companies. So it depends um, very much uh, on the content of the law, on, on the team that is available uh, to start working uh, and uh, to make sure that the law is enforced. And again, it will also uh, be for the country or for the member state to indicate what is the, the request that they present to UNCTAD. At the competition committee, we hold hearings and roundtables where the secretariat usually prepares a background notes identifying the main policy issues that will then serve as the basis for discussion. These are very useful documents as they lay out in a very comprehensive way the main topics and discussions in that particular field. 
I would say that these documents are very useful for not only for experienced agencies but also for younger agencies. And these documents, these background notes, uh, cover an immense array of topics such as identifying the benefits of competition or documents on specific uh, uh, situations and analysis on anti-competitive practices such as abuse of dominance uh, or cartel enforcement. We also have uh, background notes on advocacy tools or tools for assessing the effects of competition agencies' impact when they undertake enforcement actions. These are public documents and you can find those in our website. And I would definitely encourage younger agencies to run through those. Uh, and I'm sure that they will find their body of knowledge that will prove invaluable uh, for their development of competition law and their development of, uh, of their competition skills. ANCTAD has a new mandate in the area of consumer protection law and policy that was um, given by the General Assembly through a resolution of December uh, 2015 that approved the revision of the UN guidelines of consumer protection that had been adopted uh, 30 years uh, earlier. These new guidelines, uh, among other things, um, cover timely issues of concern for consumer protection uh, authorities all over the world, such as e-commerce, financial services, but also encourage good business practices. And the resolution also created a new uh, intergovernmental group of experts meeting that has met uh, last year in 2016 for the first time, attracting a lot of attention and participation from uh, agencies all over the world. Uh, this new mandate, of course, um, allows us to um, do synergies with the work that we are already doing in the competition field. Uh, even though uh, most of the agencies uh, that deal with consumer protection will not necessarily uh, have uh, similar responsibilities for competition policy. What kind of capacities, uh, uh, capacity building project does the ICN, the OECD, the UNCTAD uh, conduct and has conducted over the last past few years or are planning in the coming few years? Overall, I think that the OECD provides a rich, unparalleled contribution to competition policy and the competition policy arena, not only for our member countries, but also, and increasingly so, uh, to non-member countries as well. Alongside other organizations such as ANCTAD and ICN, with our different strengths and areas of expertise and specialization, I believe that we will go from strength to strength in our common mission to drive better competition policies and implementation for many years to come across the, the globe. And this goes not only for more experienced agencies, but also for younger agencies where we can help develop their competition regimes and promote economic development.